Hey Chattanooga Track Club, my name is Andy Jean. I'm a physical therapist with the Center for Sports Medicine and Orthopedics and C4 Sports Therapy. Uh, thanks for letting me talk to you guys today. If you don't know me, I'm a recreational runner, but I love working with runners here in the clinic. Um, the Track Club has asked me to talk to you guys about injury prevention and I love that topic. Um, it's, it's my job. I want to get you healthy and I want to help you stay healthy, but it's also somewhat of a buzzword. It's clickbait on the internet it's you'll you'll buy a runner's world if it talks about how you can 100% prevent injury in the future and what I would like to talk to you about is really injury prevention is not a one thing but it's a lot like a sound equalizer and I don't know much about sound equalizers but I know that there are a lot of knobs with a lot of variables that change things subtly and if we get those in the right concert it produces beautiful sound. So there's a lot of manipulation of the bass, the treble, the resonance, the, the vocals, the pitch um, that produces good sound. I would like to suggest to you that there are a lot of small things that become big things that when we put them together lead to healthy running during this training cycle, but also for a lifetime of running. I hope that there are a few things that we kind of throw out here today that um, uh, help you during your training cycle. Um, and uh, let's go through a few of those together. Tip number one, pick the right plan, but don't become slave to a spreadsheet or a marathon training plan. You certainly have to have a plan going into your marathon training. Picking the right plan is important, whether it's beginner, intermediate, or advanced, but be honest with yourself as you pick that plan. But within that, no plan is a good plan unless it can be um, adapted. Hal Higdon is a smart guy, but he does not know how you feel on a Tuesday morning. He does not know if you are sick um, or having aches and pains. Um, be okay with changing things up. If you need to move, move your long run day, be willing to do that. Be able to do that and know that it's okay. Uh, one common factor that I've seen in injured runners in our clinic is that they are slave to their spreadsheet and sometimes just not using good logic. Know that things can be manipulated and you can still make it to the finish line in, in, a, in a good time. Number two, commit to the pillars of health, which are sleep, nutrition, hydration, and movement as you train. What are the pillars of health? These are the foundational things that hold up just a healthy human being, particularly an athlete. Sleep. In a fast-paced society, we often are not sleeping enough. If you are training right now, you probably need to increase the amount of sleep that you're getting each night. And eight hours is an established um, amount that has uh, been shown to correlate with individuals who recover well and train well. Number two, nutrition. Evaluate your nutrition practices to make sure that you are adequately fueling your um, recovery and your training. Related to that, evaluate your hydration practices because hydration is so crucial to all tissue and cellular repair processes. And then lastly, we'll talk a little bit more about movement later, but to move often, we have to move well. There are some uh, uh, recommendations that I'll give you about how you can move well as a runner. You could also reference some videos that we put out for this fall training group um, last year in 2021 on this Facebook uh, group that might help you as well. Tip number three, skip a day. It's okay to skip a day. If you're uh, not recovering well, feeling overly fatigued, have pain greater than four out of 10 on a zero to 10 scale, it's better for you to not train that day than it is to train fatigued or in pain. Your best training is when you're recovered. Skip a day, it's okay. Tip number four, hit the weights. I know I said earlier that there's probably not a one thing that prevents an injury, but it has been proven that runners who strength train as little as one to two times a week for two sets of 15 reps for four to six major muscle groups. That's four to six exercises, two sets of 15. This can be done one to two times a week in as little as 20 to 30 minutes. 
Uh, those individuals have been shown to have lower injury uh, incidents than those who don't strength train. So I highly advocate for my runners who are both rehabilitating as well as uninjured runners that strength training is protective because we have to think of it this way. When we run, we're in a single leg stance where that joint on your uh, involved limb is ex uh, taking uh, pounding up to three to four times your body weight. So we've got to be able to handle those forces for thousands of steps during uh, our training as well as during competition. Strength training, I'm a big fan. Tip number five, have a secret weapon as part of your training program. What do I mean by secret weapon? Uh, a lot of us have had persistent injuries or have some nagging injuries. And as we uh, go through a training program, sometimes those nagging injuries start to creep up and become a little more frequent. I think every runner needs to know a running medicine specialist at, and have them as a secret weapon uh, and utilize them during their training. Who are these secret weapons? These are uh, running specialists who might be physical therapists, chiropractors. They also might be other um, uh, practitioners such as an acupuncturist or a massage therapist. These folks can help you recover better and help keep the nagging injuries at bay and help keep you um, in your training program rather than having to stop to seek more um, uh, intensive medical evaluation due to some injury that is flaring during your program. Have a secret weapon, find one today, know who you might need to go to if something starts creeping in. Number six, equipment matters. And for runners, that key equipment is shoes. And we have some awesome um, running shoe stores here in Chattanooga. They all start with a fast break front runner fleet feet. Equipment matters, but along that line, I work a lot with individuals with foot and ankle issues and having the right shoes is where it starts. Um, I would encourage you to stay in the middle versus being pulled to the extreme. There's a lot of shoe fads that I would encourage you to not necessarily stay away from, but only make shoe changes if they're indicated. I would encourage you from swinging from one end of the pendulum to the other. That might be going from an ultra cushion shoe, and you know what brands those are, down to a zero drop or more minimalist type of shoe. I would also encourage you to uh, stay away from the performance fads unless you are um, at the highest level. If you're trying to qualify for the, uh, um, for the Olympic uh, trials or something like that, a carbon fiber shoe might benefit you from its lightness and its performance aspects. But for the average Joe that comes into our clinic, um, I think you're better served by staying in the middle, finding something that fits the form of your shoe because the form of your shoe affects the function of you as a runner. And so equipment matters. So utilize our sponsors, Fast Break, Front Runner, Fleet Feet. Um, they serve us very well with individuals with foot and ankle pathologies here at the Center for Sports Medicine. And I think it's extremely key for runners executing a training program. Number seven, movement matters. I know I mentioned movement as a key pillar of health, but runners need to be able to control and have uh, mobility and control of movement in some key patterns. Um, if you paid attention to uh, any of our videos last year with the fall training group, we really went through what some of those key movements are. You can find those um, back in the September area of this fall training group from 2021. But Nike Train Club does a very good job of having some runner flows, some runner movement recovery um, ex um, videos that are eight to 10 minutes in length. Key movements that runners need to be able to control include single leg stance balance, big toe mobility, ankle dorsiflexion, that's the coming back of your ankle so that the rest of your body can rotate over it hip extension and spine extension so that you can get your leg behind you as well as trunk and thoracic rotation. Being able to control these movements is key. And so um, as an individual is going through a, a, a marathon training program, we're so locked in on mileage that I would encourage you that you um, engage in some restorative movement um, exercises and uh, just one recommendation of many good options out there in, uh, is from the Nike Train Club uh, if you just search the term uh, runner. Number eight, 
slow wins. If you're in this fall marathon training group, you're trying to run a marathon or a half marathon. And as you're executing that spreadsheet or that plan, um, follow the 80-20 rule. And 80% of your training should be building an aerobic base. Don't do like I've done a couple of times and try to just blow through my runs just to get them over with. We need to go slow during these 80% of your runs. The other 20% can be speed work, hill work, intervals, but building an aerobic base is the most important thing for somebody trying to run 26.2 miles. Just remember, slow wins. Number nine and number 10. Number nine, make it to the starting line. And number 10, let us at the Center for Sports Medicine and Orthopedics and C4 Sports Therapy help you. Um, we've seen many individuals um, take a small nagging injury, correct it, and, and not have to be pulled off of their training program. Conversely, we've seen a lot of people in the past who might have waited just too long before they started getting conservative medical care. We know what your goals are. I say at C4 Sports Therapy, our goals are your goals. Let us come work with you as you go through your training program. Um, we're happy to help you. Referral is not required to receive our services. Um, our number is 423-713-5639. Please contact us if there's any way that we can help you um, during your training program. Thanks so much for the time that you've let us spend together today. Um, my name is Andy Jean. My email is agean at sportmed.com. Uh, feel free to contact me if there's any way that I in particular can help you. I hope you guys um, have a uh, great training cycle. I hope things go well in November. And uh, more importantly, I hope you have a happy and a healthy running for a lifetime. Thanks so much.